ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Dipti Shah and welcome to my show, Artistry. Today I have with me Ms. Sanyukta Gupta, who is the founding partner of Education Arena Limited, which is an academic consultancy and a tutoring services center. Hello, Sanyukta, and welcome to my show. Hello, Dipti. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for coming. So Sayukta, tell us about the subjects that you tutor and when did you begin tutoring? So I teach maths and all the three sciences at uh, IGCSE level and I teach maths, physics and chemistry um, to IB level or A levels, you can say. I started teaching uh, in 2005. Um, I did a career shift. I used to be work, I used to work in a company um, uh, that used to, um, it, it was my, after my, uh, I, after I finished my engineering and it was related to telecom and radio frequency telecommunication. Um, yeah, so I, and since then I've been teaching. So Sayukta, uh, for the past two years with COVID and, you know, distance learning, how has the teaching methodology changed and how has it affected the students? Ah, it's a very good question, Deepthi. Um, the very first thing when COVID hit us in February, 2020, uh, that's when I went online as well. I was not very comfortable teaching online, being an old school uh, format uh, teacher. I very much believed in face-to-face -face and then um, conducting my lessons when I see my students. Um, but as you know, uh, uh, these challenges, we have to accept, we have to adapt and we have to move on. It was very challenging for us because all our uh, classes are very dynamic. I don't just work on a set pattern. So students come in, they have problems with the topics or the syllabus, they just throw in topics to me. And then and there, I have to prepare the material and conduct the class. So it's not, it's not very static, it's very dynamic. And having all the resources online, it's, it was challenging for us. But yes, we moved on, we did it. And I'm happy that we have all our resources online, so Sayukta, um, have the students like really adopted and do they think that this is the way the future is going to be like? Some of them are more flexible than the others, let's put it this way. Um, more flexibility in the sense that they have really taken it in because there is no end to it. Um, on and off the schools go uh, online to face to face, there are so many changes going on. So instead of complaining, I think they have really adapted and like, okay, whatever brings, uh, whatever is brought to them, they take it for that time, and then they move on. So yes, they have, I should say, some odd 10% haven't, but it's okay. Right. So adaptability uh, has been, you know, the key factor for the teachers as well as for the students. Absolutely, absolutely. So Sayukta, you teach very crucial subjects, maths and sciences, you know, at the IB level is like the key to your success, or at least we have been taught that it is the key to our, you know, future. Either we become an engineer, take up medicine or whatever it is. These subjects are the strongest, uh, you know, contenders for a better future. So what are your top three tips for students to succeed in these three subjects? I think uh, there are many things, but yes, top three, as you mentioned. Uh, running away from something only gets worse. So I personally, when I was at that age, um, maybe 17, 18, and I did not like physics that much, but there was one teacher who just was so, uh, so nice to me in the sense that he kept on um, teaching me no matter how, how, how much I used to reluctantly go to his classes. And um, 
he said, no, one day you will love it. So I think it is, the more I used to run away, the more it used to haunt me. So I think the, uh, the tip is to get your doubts cleared out, to be persistent and do your best. I'm pretty sure if you do your best, everything is going to work out. Right. You remind me of my physics teacher and my you know, <laughs> trauma with physics. I used to get stomach cramps as soon as the you know, bell rang for the physics period. Like literally I was having an attack in my tummy. I mean, I can never forget the trauma. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh my I God. can understand, but physics is my favorite subject. After that, I think I, I should give the credit to my teacher, his <laughs> persistence with me. I love physics. Absolutely, amazing. I hope your students love them because of you. <laughs> I hope so too. And I try right. my best. So Sanyukta, apart from teaching, tell us about what else you do. Hmm. So yes, teaching as for everybody is work, uh, but it's also the work that is connected to my heart. I do get tired uh, because I get uh, busy schedules um, and then at the end of the day, I really don't want to teach. So I want to do something which really de-stresses me. Um, some of the things that I do, I love hiking. I'm a classical dancer. So in my free time or with uh, friends, uh, if I get the opportunity to perform, I, I do do rehearsals and perform. I also do yoga. Uh, but two of the most recent uh, hobbies I have taken up and uh, I'm really pursuing it more are baking and candle making. So, yeah. yes, those two are my main ones at the moment. <laughs> and you also run a, a, an Instagram blog on your cooking, which is not just baking, I guess. Yes, it's not. <laughs> And you're a mother to two beautiful daughters whom you are, I think, teaching everything in the world that you know. How do you do so many uh, things? I think whatever hobby I take, I at least, uh, or whatever I had wanted to do as a child or while I was uh, studying and uh, while I was working, um, whatever I wanted to do as a hobby and I didn't get time, now, having my own business, I'm taking out time for those hobbies and trying to do it. And when I take up something, I make sure I involve my daughters because maybe they don't like it, but they listen and it goes into their head, I think. And one day, who knows, they will like it. So I try to involve them in everything. I do yoga, I involve them. I started hiking, I involved them. I started baking, I involved them. And I started candle making and they love it. So yeah, um, the, the crucial thing is finding time. So as I said, these are de-stressing uh, activities for me. So I try to find time for myself and then me time is actually all these times of all these activities that I do. So you are, you know, uh, treading the scale towards balance between what you do and who you are basically in life. So could you explain a little bit more? How, how do you maintain this balance? How do you schedule your activities? I, as I said before, I'm a very old school style of working, although we have gone digital. I still love writing everything on pen and paper. I have my schedule on paper. I, every month I put my schedules by hand, like pen and paper, I said. And 
I list out uh, for a week what are the things I have to do and I prioritize it. So whether it be my baking or these are apart from my normal working schedule actually. So whether it's baking or candle making or I have to do some parent teacher meeting, everything is listed out and everything is prioritized depending on the urgency. So it makes it very clear for me in my mind, I know these are the things and in my mind, I just go on ticking. So I think even though we are digital, I mean, some people are digital. I don't say uh, it doesn't work digitally. It does work digitally for some people because yeah, it's fine. I mean, adapting it to digital world. For me, it doesn't. I hate to look at phone when I don't have to. Um, so I, I look at my diary. And that helps me to organize myself. So your diary is the key to your multitasking oh, yes. uh, success. Yes. And I don't give it to anybody. My husband also can't touch it. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Sayukta, please share your top three tips for success in any area of life. So I think be committed. First, you decide when whatever you have decided to do, uh, whether you have decided to relax for that day, be committed to that. Don't get distracted uh, like, oh, right, I have taken this day off to relax, but no, 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 I should take work off. No, that doesn't happen either. So I think it's be con committed, learn from the journey is like whatever you are doing, learn from it as you go along. And I'm pretty sure those lessons definitely improve you. Um, if sometimes you do um, get uh, really negative thoughts, change your perspective. Um, it's sometimes, because it's difficult, your mind plays with you and um, it, it tries to tell you, no, just leave it. You won't be able to do it. And at that time, if you change your perspective and say, oh, let me give it a last shot. And I'm pretty sure that last shot does work. Yeah, I think those are very practical tips to, you know, succeeding in any, any area of our lives. Awesome, Sayukta. Where can people follow you, reach you, and look at your amazing pictures that you post? So my Instagram uh, account, which is cookhouse underscore chronicles, um, I, I have shared with you. Um, and for the teaching side, I have uh, the business, uh, uh, our website, which is Education Arena Limited. Um, I think it's educationarena.com.hk. So people can look at it. And for Instagram, yes, that's my only account at the moment where I do post everything from candle making to, to recipes to baking and sometimes my family as well. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much for being in my show and sharing such practical tips to multitasking. Thank you, Sayukta. Thank, thank you so much, Deepi. It was such a pleasure. Mine too. Thank you.